Okay, <clears throat> grab your Pilates ball. We are gonna start on the ground today on our backside. So once you've got your ball, clear your weights and your TheraBand just out of the way so that you have plenty of space. And now we're gonna come down onto our back and we're gonna place the ball between our knees, between our thighs. So come down onto your back, place that ball right between the knees and thighs. And then once you're there, just give a second, let your shoulder blades kind of connect with the ground. Make sure your tailbone feels good. We are gonna keep that ball between the knees and the inner thighs. And we're gonna focus a little bit on a little pelvic tilt. So once you've got yourself settled onto the ground, hands down alongside the hips, and we're just gonna move right into a pelvic tilt. So you're gonna press your low back into the ground, tailbone's gonna curl upward and then relax to the natural curve of your back. And then just take a few times here. As you do this work here, once you've got it going on and you can kind of put it on autopilot, just curling the tailbone up and relaxing down, pay attention to that little squeeze that might happen at the ball as you do that little bit of work in that pelvic tilt. So lift and lower, but notice the ball connected to your thighs. Cool, take about two more pelvic tilts here. And then you're gonna take one nice and slow, press your low back into the ground. Notice how strong you feel here in your center or lack of strength. So just kind of tune in and notice where do you feel strong and then relax to the natural curve of your back and notice, do you feel really strong or does this feel like a looser or more weak position? There's no right or wrong, but just wanna notice what feels good in your body. And then find the position that where you felt like muscles were kicked on and you felt the strongest. So for me, that means low back pressing down into the ground. But for you, it might feel like more of a natural curve. So find the position where you feel like there's a little bit of a kick on of those core and abdominal muscles. And then once you feel like you found it, keep and maintain that structure. And now we're going to move right into some hip bridges, but we're going to try to keep those core muscles kicked on the whole time. So keep and maintain that strong position with your center. Lift your hips up just as high as you can go without losing that sense of strength in your center and then lower back down with control. Keep and find that strength in your center. Lift your hips up just as high as you can without losing that strength and then lower back down with control. And then once you feel like, okay, now I got it. I understand what I'm shooting for and I feel that strength in my center. Now find a little bit of rhythm. Go up and down at a pace that feels good to you. I'd rather you get one really great one than 10 really ones that we're, we're not locking in and finding those muscles. Beautiful, take one or two more up and down. And then the next time you touch down, we're gonna keep that ball between the thighs, but now think thigh master. So we're gonna crush and squeeze. So we're just gonna push our inner thighs in towards each other and then release. And we just wanna feel that little bit of squeeze and release, working the inner thigh muscles, working our abductors and our adductors. So we're working the inner thighs and the outer thighs. So see now, can you tune in and notice that little bit of difference? Notice the inner thighs doing some work. And then can you notice your outer thighs doing some work? And sometimes if it helps, and it helps me a lot, sometimes just placing hands on so you can kind of tune in and feel where is that muscle action coming from? Nice, and now we're gonna take it into little one inch squeezes or think pulsing. So we're gonna squeeze and pulse and see if you can pulse for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Nice, okay, relax all of that for just a second. Now we're gonna lift our legs up into tabletop position and you might have to just reposition the ball. So we want the ball slightly up towards the knees and we wanna hold and maintain that position of the ball between the knees. And now we're gonna alternate between swinging one foot out and then the other. And I'll spin myself around just to make sure you can see what's going on. So the ball is between my knees, my legs are in the tabletop, one foot swings out and then the other, but we try to maintain that nice 90 degree bend with the legs. So it's just rotating outward and then coming back in with control. So we're gonna keep that going on. And if you can let that kind of get on autopilot, we're keeping that ball between the knees, one foot and then the other. But now you got that going on. Can you tune back into those core muscles? Does it feel better to press the low back into the ground 
or does it feel a little bit more strong and supportive to have the natural curve of your back? There's no right or wrong, but just subtle variations in our bodies may, may apply. Beautiful, one more, one more out each side or even yourself out, but then as both come to center, arms are gonna stretch out towards the ceiling and we're gonna take it into some double toe taps. Same thing here for those core muscles. Does it feel better to press your low back into the ground or does it feel better to have a slightly natural curve of the back? Once you feel like you've got a good sense of what feels stronger in your center, we're gonna focus on moving the thighs away from the torso and touching those toes down towards the ground. If your toes don't touch the ground, don't worry about that. We're working those hip flexor muscles. We're working our core and abdominal muscles. We're working out of the shoulders just a little bit. And then can you find your breath here? Exhale on your effort and inhale to come back up. Nice, take one more time up and down. And then the next time you come up, grab that ball with your hands, set your feet down so they're just in that sort of bent knee, neutral uh, prep for a bridge position. But now with the ball between your palms, you're gonna push in, same thing with that thigh muster, but arms are extended straight from the chest, palms facing in towards each other. Push in and give a little squeeze and then release. Push in, give a little squeeze and release. Push in and squeeze and release. Push in, squeeze and release one more time, push and squeeze and release. And now we're gonna push and squeeze, hold that little bit of squeeze and scrape your elbows, pull your elbows down towards your ribs, push in and squeeze, push that ball back up towards the ceiling, push in and squeeze, scrape your elbows down, push in and squeeze, push the ball up towards the ceiling. Do that a couple more times, just find a good steady pace that works good for you. But there's that focus, pushing into the ball, scraping the elbows, Notice one hand might feel a little stronger than the other. So does it look like your, your ball wants to steer a car a little bit? There's like that little bit of wobble right at that onset. Can you keep that even pace without the ball turning underneath your hands? Beautiful, one more up and down. And then we're gonna lighten up just a little bit. So loosen your chest muscles. And now we're just gonna start a little bit of a figure eight pass underneath the leg. So one leg is gonna pick up and then the other, but it doesn't need to be extreme. So think about just finding sort of looseness of the limbs here, pass the ball underneath one leg and then underneath the other. And we do wanna create a sense of looseness. We're gonna get into a stretch in just a second. So take a few seconds here. So with as much light sense of looseness as you can find in the muscles, even though they're working, Nice, one more pass underneath each side. And then, then when you're ready, lift your hips up, slide that ball underneath your tailbone. So it's underneath the tailbone, right centered in between those broad hip bones. Once you've got your way there, hands out at your sides, and we're just gonna do a gentle rock side to side. So like you're trying to drop a marble to one hip bone and then the other, but it's not that big giant scooping figure eight. So just think one hip lift and then the other. Awesome, now if all of that is feeling good, now you're gonna walk your feet slightly wider and take it into a bigger, more figure eight like movement. So one hip is gonna roll up and then the other, and you're rolling that ball across the sacrum, across the tailbone and the crest of the hips. Lovely, one more time each side. And then as you come back to center, you're gonna to toe heel your feet in. So they're about hip width distance apart. Left foot's gonna stay on the ground. Right knee is just gonna draw up towards the chest. Let your tailbone kind of hug around the ball a little bit. So if it feels like your low back goes from a natural position to like you're pressing your low back into the ground, let it do that for a second. Let your knee drop into your chest, take a nice big breath. And then release and switch to the other side. So left knee is gonna pull into the chest as far as it can go, even if that means that the tailbone scoops a little bit. Mm 
Nice, and then set that foot down. We're gonna come back to the right side, but just check in with the ball. Make sure it feels like it's good and positioned under your tailbone, around the hips. And then right knee is gonna pull into the chest. Can you hold on to your right knee? Can you let your left leg slide nice and long? Awesome, and then we just wanna check in first. Make sure the ball feels stable underneath you. If it doesn't feel stable, this is where you'll stay and you'll just try to find a little stability here. If this feels great and you wanna take it a little bit further, your left hand is gonna extend up alongside your ear. Take one more breath. If your hand is up alongside your ear, go ahead and release it. Slowly slide that left foot in with control. Release your right foot. And now we're gonna to switch to the other side. So left knee is gonna start by pulling into the chest. See if you can catch hold of that near that shin. Make sure everything feels stable. If you need to readjust your ball, take a second to do that. But then once you're there, if you can extend your right leg nice and long, catch a little stability here. And then if all of that feels good, right hand is gonna extend up alongside your ear. Nice, and then when you're ready, release your hand, slide your right leg in, release your hold of that left leg. And now we're gonna lift the butt up, slide that ball out from underneath you, and then come into a nice seated position. So we're just gonna tuck that ball right up against the low back. So it's gonna tuck up nice and tight up against the tailbone. And then once you've got your way there, we're gonna lean back into the ball just a little bit, hands behind the head. We're gonna lean back and then take it into a, think mini crunches. So we're just gonna lean back just enough. And then once you feel like those abdominal muscles contract and kick on, lift yourself back up away from the ball. So lean back, crunch, and then come back up. Take about five more just like that. Awesome. Now on this last one, we're gonna see if we can release our hands from our head. Can you tuck your elbows onto the ground so the ball is still under the low back, but now the elbows are supporting just a little bit. And then can you relax your abdominal muscles so there's that created supported arch. Let your shoulders kind of soften back, let your head drop back or tuck your chin in. That's gonna just depend on what feels the most comfortable to your neck and where do you breathe the most comfortably. But then once you've got your way there, just give a second, let your, let your breath do the rest of the work here. Take a nice deep breath in. Slow breath out. Two more cycles of breath. Use your elbows and forearms, help push yourself up with control. And now we're gonna move that ball so that it's underneath the bra line. So think under the shoulder blades in that middle back area, not as big and supportive, but, but there's a little bit more structure than the low back. So once you found your way there, just kind of lay onto the ball and then we're gonna see how it feels to take it into a back bend. So you're gonna let your head drop back as far as feels comfortable. If you hit any point where that's like too much and you're laboring to breathe, your hands are gonna support the head and you're gonna see if you can find a slightly softer position. But if it feels okay to be there, let your head drop back, let your arms be wherever feels the most comfortable. It is a big opening through the front of the body. So make sure you're breathing well here. Take a, take a moment just to assess, notice your breath. Take a nice big breath in. Slow breath out. If you can stand it, two more cycles of breath with your shoulders getting as heavy into the ground as you can. Awesome, when you're ready, head is gonna lift, hands are gonna support the head. And now we're gonna push into the feet, lift your butt up and take about a two or three inch glide. Think low middle back or, or however you wanna say that. So we're not in the low back proper, but we're kind of below the shoulder blades a little bit. So you might be hitting some ribs, but you might get into the low back just slightly. Just make sure you keep your core muscles kicked on just a little bit so we don't accidentally get into that low back area and it's unsupported. Nice, take one more little roll up and down here. And then we're gonna see if we can just glide up to the shoulder blades or that space between the shoulder blades. So glide up and then once you're there, set your butt down and take three crunches here. So lean back over the ball and then contract the abdominal muscles to crunch up. Lean over the ball, contract and come up. 
do about three more just like that. Awesome. And then on this last one, if it feels okay to do that, you're going to relax your head back, maybe release your hands from your head, let your arms come out wherever feels the most comfortable. So now we're getting that bigger back bend or that opening through the front of the chest, think collarbones, heart center, and let your arms open just as wide as you can stand. And then once you've got that position going on, we just come back to the breath. Take about three to five nice deep breaths. Nice, when you're ready, start by slowly lifting your head, support your head with your hands, push into your feet, and now take that nice big glide. So think shoulder blades to the tops of the shoulders. Beautiful, take one more big shoulder glide all the way up and down. And then when you're ready, we're gonna set our butt down. Now you might reposition yourself in any way that works good for you. We're gonna take that ball under our head like it's a pillow. So find your way to a point where you can place that ball underneath your head and then make sure it feels like it's in a nice position. Um, if your ball is super inflated, you might just do a little bit of rearranging. And then once you've got that ball underneath your head, so the ball gets that little bit of roll, so we're not gonna go big giant range of motion, but we're gonna start to micro turn the head side to side. So just a tiny little turn of the head and just as you do this work here, you might start to just notice the texture of the ball or just the feel of the ball underneath your head. Great, now the next time your head turns slightly to the right, stay there and then bring it into a little nod up and down. Awesome, one more little nod up and down and then turn your head slightly to the left. And then once you've got your way there, a little nod of the head up and down. Lovely, one more little nod of the head up and down here. Return your head to center. If it feels good, draw tiny little micro circles in the air with your nose, just going in one direction. It's gonna be a really small range of motion because we don't want that ball rolling out from underneath your head. And then when you feel ready, take those circles and go the other way. Same thing here. We're on a small range of motion. So we keep the ball trapped under the head. Beautiful. One more circle around in this direction. And then when you're ready, we're going to pivot over to one side. So you roll over to whatever side you like best, but then take that ball and tuck it underneath your rib cage. So get into that sideline position, tuck the ball underneath that solidness of the rib side of the ribs. And then bottom hand, it's just going to extend underneath your head. Top hand is going to reach up, take a little side bend and then see, play around with that top leg. For some of us, it might feel good to have the leg extended. And for some of us, it might feel better to keep it bent. So just see what feels best with that top leg. And then once you've got your way there, so we've got that side stretch through the body, we might feel the breath in the rib cage, and you might even feel a little stretch up into the armpit. Once you've got a good stretch or a little extension through the side of the body, take three nice big breaths. Awesome, and then when you're ready, we're gonna lift up slightly, but stay in that slightly sideline position, but now we're gonna pick the ribs up and tuck. So think about where the curve of the ribs is, we're gonna tuck the ball into that side. So under the ribs, into that soft belly tissue. So we're just gonna tuck it in just a little bit. So we'll be slightly angled. And then we're gonna lean onto the ball. So we're gonna create a little bit of a compression. And this is just gonna sort of help support our breath in the diaphragm. So we wanna be, we wanna be really good breathers. We wanna breathe for the rest of our lives. So lean into that ball, create that little bit of compression, take a nice full breath into the rib cage. So think about breathing front to back, side to side into your rib cage.
Nice. Take one more breath. Awesome. And then when you're ready, we're going to lift up and take it over to the other side. So either flip yourself over or spin yourself around, or we're going to take that ball, place it underneath the rib cage, get yourself set up into that sideline position. Bottom hand is going to extend so that the head can rest. Top hand is going to lift up and then you'll choose what feels better sensationally for that leg. So for some of us, it might feel good to extend it long. For some of us, it might feel a little bit better to keep it bent and supported. So find that. And then once you're there, just kind of tune into the side of the body. Notice your breath here. Awesome. And then when you're ready, prop yourself up just a little bit so we can reposition that ball. So we're going to bring that ball so it's underneath the curve of the ribs in that softer center. So think side of the diaphragm underneath the side of the ribs. And then just rotate just so that you can lean into that ball. And then the breath does the rest of the work for you here. Nice. And then when you're ready from here, if you can do it, we're going to just roll over onto our abdomen. So prop your elbows, scoot your knees underneath, and then find your way onto your abdomen with the ball underneath the belly or at the right around the belly button line. And then once you got your way there, we're going to start with that little roll of the hip side to side. So you're just going to like you're trying to do like little hip dip planks. So we're just going to drop one hip to the side and then the other, but the whole time we're rolling across the ball. So keep your abdominal muscles as soft and loose as you can stand. For some of us, a little bit of tension in the abdomen is just a little bit protective and will feel good. But if you've practiced this a while and you can let your abdominal muscles relax, it's gonna massage the muscles. It's gonna massage the internal organs. Beautiful, one more little rock side to side. Now you might choose to stay with the rocking. That might feel a little bit better and more beneficial because laying on the ball can feel a little uncomfortable, but if it feels okay to be here, we're gonna let the ball be, it's in that lined up with the belly button. So it's in the softest tissue of our center, elbows and forearms down, soften your shoulders, soften the back of your neck. And we're gonna take about three breaths here, relaxing the abdominal muscles as best you can. If you can come all the way down and put as much body weight on as possible, awesome. For some of us that might feel just a little too intense. So find the level of work that feels right to you. And then can you breathe comfortably here? Can you breathe in through your nose? Breathe out through your nose, even longer than your inhale. You might notice that little heartbeat in your belly. Keep breathing, relax the abdominal muscles best you can. Take one more breath. Beautiful, and then we're gonna prop our way up to a table position. So take your time, prop your way up nice and slow and controlled, and we're gonna go into a half puppy pose. So take your ball into your right hand, reach that hand out nice and long, Left hand is gonna swing over and across so that you're just getting your forearm down on the ground. And then see if you can drop your forehead down onto that left forearm. Right hand is extended out, drop your chest down, take a nice deep breath in. Slow breath out. Firm up your right hand, lift your torso up and away and we're gonna switch over to the other side. So pass that ball over and across. Swing your right fingers over to the left side so that your forearm is set up so your forehead can rest. And then once you're there, let everything soften down. Beautiful. And then when you're ready, come up nice and slow. Now you might just sit back on your heels or sit in any seated position that feels good to you. And then we just want a little access to the front of the neck and the chest. So we're gonna just go shoulder to shoulder to start push into the ball, push in and drag it across. And we wanna see if we can get the skin to kind of move with the ball a little bit. So let your, let your chest move, let your skin move, let all that connective tissue move with the ball if you can find it. And then when you feel ready, we're gonna take it into that turn the doorknob. So we're gonna push and turn. And same thing here, we wanna catch that skin, catch that connective tissue. Sometimes your clothes are gonna kind of drag with you. Just let anything happen that feels okay if it's causing any too much friction and it's irritating your skin then then go mindfully all 
All right, now we're gonna take that twist and turn maneuver, but now we're gonna move it up across the neck and the throat. So a little bit more mindful as you go, push in and turn, push in and turn, move across the neck. We've got a lot of nerve endings around the neck from our vagus nerve. So we wanna use the ability to control our central nervous system or find that calming and soothing sensation here, but without injuring ourselves. So we're picking up that skin, twisting and turning it just a little bit, take it from side to side. Nice, and then the next time you come over to one side, we're just gonna tuck that ball into the side of your neck and then just let your ear drop down and just relax. Let your hand hold the ball. Relax your ear into the ball. Take a nice deep breath in. Slow breath out. One more breath. Great, and then when you're ready, move it over and across to the other side. I'm gonna come back to my original side just because of the microphone, but you switch over to the other side. And then once you've got it tucked in, drop your ear towards your shoulder and then just let your head be as heavy as it can. So your hand is holding the ball in place, but you're gonna relax the neck muscles and just come back to your breath. Take a nice deep breath in. Beautiful, and then when you're ready, lift your head up and away, leave the ball on the ground. We're gonna come up to a standing position. So come up in any way that works good for you, but then we're just gonna quickly soft roll the bottom of the feet. So one foot on, one foot off, and you're just gonna softly roll the bottom of your foot just to kind of bring a little stimulation back down to the feet. So we focused on that upper body quite a bit. So just bring a little life back down to your feet. Nice, and then when you're ready, switch over to the other side, place your other foot on. Excellent, one more up and down with that foot and then both feet on the ground, just take a nice big breath, reach your arms up and overhead, big giant breath, lift your chest, look up towards the sky. And then when you're ready, bend your knees a little bit or a lot of bit, hinge from your waist, reach down towards the ground and then just take a second to take a little bit of a dangle here. So let your arms kind of hang nice and heavy, let your spine be nice and heavy, take a nice big breath. And then bend your knees a lot, pull your abdominal muscles in, roll up nice and slow and controlled. You guys are amazing. Nice work today. Woo.